more Hashem loves a person, the more that person suffers in life. Not like everyone think. Everyone think, oh, this guy is lucky, he made it, he's very successful, you know. So what's, what's the, the Torah say? The opposite. They say, et asher yoav Hashem yeyasro. Someone that Hashem loves, he actually torture him. So what is this? Uh, uh, sadistics? What uh, Hashem enjoyed to torture people? What's going on over here? The answer is, because suffering in this world is equal to a lot bigger suffering in the afterworld. Most people think, as long as I don't have to suffer here. <coughs> and when people suffer here, everyone feels bad for them, which is normal. It's a normal reaction. But if people would really learn very good, lots of Torah, lots of Kabbalah, and they would know the descriptions of what's happening to people in the afterlife, for every little sin, what's the price? Then they say, oh, wow, I got away very easy. I got away very easy with my kind of suffering compared to how bad he could have been. And the people who smile today and they sing, ah, oh, Baruch Hashem, I'm healthy, I'm lucky, I'm free, I'm making, I'm doing. And they're thinking, oh, I'm lucky, Hashem loves me. Look, my friend is suffering and I'm not like this. That means Hashem likes me, it's the other way around. For you, Hashem is preparing something for later on, which will be a lot bigger. So everything is the opposite. The Gemara says, one of the Amoraim, his son died, and he, his Neshama went up to the Shamaim, and then he came back to life, what we call today clinical death. And his father asked him, what did you see up there? So he told him, I've seen, I've seen everything is the opposite of this world. Everything. Everyone that is important over here is nothing over there. And everyone that over here is supposedly considered to be nothing is very important over there. So his father told him, no, you saw the real world up there. Over here it's all opposite. As Chazal say, Alma de Shikra, it's the world of lies. It's all fake, it's all illusion, it's all external. Many people that look very righteous, they're very wicked. And many people who would not even look at them and you think they're righteous, they're very righteous. And it's not the clothes that makes the person. And it's not from what family he came. And it doesn't matter that his grandfather was a huge rebbe. Hashem doesn't give reward based on who your grandfather is and how nice your clothes are and how long your beard are. This is all important thing. I'm not saying they're not important, but they're very minor. One minute of Lashonara is already worse than walking 60 years without a beard. One minute, but people don't know how to compare. Because this is a, a sin from the Torah, a serious sin. And this is not a sin, this is tradition. You don't want, you don't want. Or give other example. If a person dressed a little bit different than the other, in Shamaim they won't evaluate, evaluate that person based on how he dress, as long as it's modest. They evaluate you how you live, what kind of emuna you have, how, how you happy? There's mitzvah in the Torah always to be happy. But everybody understands there's times in life very difficult to be happy. But then that is halacha, chayav. Chayav means it's an obligation. It's not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. It's an obligation. Chayav adam levarech al ha-ra'a keshem shemevarech al ha-tova. Person has to bless Hashem. Mamash, like we do birkat gomel Thank him, thank Hashem for what is considered very bad in his life, with the same joy that he, that he blessed Hashem for the greatest days of his life. Like when he married his children, or when he had a baby, or when he made a lot of money, or all kinds of exciting things that happen in his life. When the biggest tragedies happen, he has to bless Hashem equally. How many people can follow this halakha, this obligation? Not that many. But if Hashem said that a person has to do it, that means it's possible. Now, if I'm not able to do it, let me see how can I improve myself. Which means, like Rosh Baruch Hu said, the Torah is for all the generations until the end of time, equally. Which means it applies to me just like it, was, uh, it applied to Rabbi Akiva 2,000 years ago. Same thing. And Hashem said, everyone must say bracha for the good, the same he does for the bad. Means every Jew, even the smallest one, even the one in the lowest level in this generation is capable of doing it. Why? Because if not, he would not be Allah for generations. When there is to be Allah for generations, like Rosh Baruch who used to send prophets. And the prophets came and say, only now this has to be done. Only now is Milchemet Mitzvah. Everyone has to leave their businesses, they have to leave the yeshivot and go to fight, go to a war. 
risk your life, risk whatever you have. So this is a temporary obligation. But when it comes in the Torah, which is a permanent obligation, which means every one of us, with no exception, can reach this level. He should be happy, just like in the greatest moments of his life. And the way to do it is to work very, very strongly on learning emunah every day. It's not something that you learn a day or two a week and you think it's going to stay by you. Emunah, it's like food. When you eat, you're full. A few hours you don't eat, you become hungry again. You say, hey, why do I? Yesterday I ate. Why am I hungry again now? Because emunah comes in and it doesn't stay in. There are certain things in life, such as knowledge. It comes in, it stays in. At least it's supposed to stay in. Once in a while, you have to refresh your memory with what you learn. But it comes in, that's it. If you didn't believe in Hashem, and someone just proved to you there is Hashem, once you got to a point that it was proven, you know it for the rest of your life. You don't need, again, a proof. That's it. You know it's knowledge. If you didn't know about germs, and someone proved to you with a microscope they exist, before you did not know, now you know. That's it. You know it for life. But emunah... Today you are very convinced, I will speak now, in the next half an hour you will feel all in carriage. Tomorrow you're back to zero. And tomorrow you have to hear it again. And every day, it's like marash, like the same obligation we have to eat, we have to feed the neshama. And this is the test of life. The test of life. HaKadosh Baruch Hu say in the Midbar, don't save man for tomorrow. Eat everything today. Hashem did not want the Jews to keep bread for tomorrow. What's the crime of saving? If I made today $100 in my work and I put on the side 40 for tomorrow in case I won't have, is that a crime? We see that Hashem treated them like criminals. Why? The ones who left for tomorrow, what happened? It became all rotten, all full of worms. What's the crime? Okay, so he doesn't have 100% confidence in Hashem that tomorrow he'll have what to eat. Is that a crime? The answer is yes. So Hashem wanted everyone to have a munah in him, 100%.